the ICU is so full of human drama. Looking after critically ill patients in the ICU, I see on a daily basis the impact that respiratory illness can have on patients and on their families, those that require being intubated, and if I'm being honest, how many patients we see that die in our ICU. My name is Bob Wilson. I'm from Northern Manitoba, a town called Norrie House. Proud Aboriginal person. I am a high school teacher. I teach math and science. We had planned to get married in 2020, but then COVID hit and so we didn't get married that summer. And then in March of 2021, Bob got really sick. Doing things was a struggle. Going upstairs was a struggle. I had a hard time catching my breath. I felt weak. Ultimately, they hypothesized that it was autoimmune hepatitis that took out his liver and that had caused hepatopulmonary syndrome. Then we were told that Bob needed a liver transplant to survive, but currently in his weakened medical state that he would survive the surgery. The practical platform, the idea was birthed in the throes of the pandemic. The big idea is that you create a system for doing research and you use that system to test many new treatments, not just one new treatment. And that's revolutionary. What Practical has done is gather people from all over Canada, the United States, Europe, Australia, Ireland, Argentina, all of these countries where there are people who have been asking the exact same question, but in silos. By combining our forces, both our kind of expertises in mechanical ventilation or respiratory physiology, as well as with running clinical trials, we get those improvements from kind of the trial stage to our patients a lot faster. When you look back on the last, let's say, 50 years and how we care for critically ill patients with breathing problems, it's unbelievable the advances that we've made and the trajectory and the improved survival and improved long-term sequelae that, that patients experience. It's only been possible because patients and families have been willing to enroll their loved ones into trials looking at improving the way that we care for folks. He'd gone from being a regular healthy dude in our mind to being this medically fragile, one in a million kind of case. I didn't realize I was gonna be in the hospital and away from home for over a year. The amount of things that had to line up in the way that they did is nothing short of a miracle. On paper, Bob should not have survived. Our whole effort is to try to give patients time to recover from the illness that caused the problem in the first place. What we've learned is that the way we deliver that support can make a huge difference to the patient's outcome. So what we're really trying to do is, in, in practical is test a variety of ways of better supporting patients, sustaining life, so that they can recover and get back to their lives and their families. I remember once I asked a doctor like, why we, why we were rush, hustling to get Bob out of bed because it felt rushed to me. And he looked me dead in the eye and said, because that's what the research says gives them the best long-term prognosis. The most important thing to me is helping people to understand how and why research programs like Practical are important. If we don't educate people and we don't help them to know and understand that this is really important, then people like Bob would not make it. How do we show the world that this is the best way to look after patients and that every patient around the world should get this kind of care? Ultimately, that depends on doing these kinds of trials to prove benefits so that the world sees, okay, this is the best way to look after patients in this situation. So that makes these clinical trials incredibly important because they impact not only the care of the patients here in our hospital, but the care of patients all around the world. <laughs>